It takes a lot of people to keep this 24-hour city running. Keeping the lights on at Las Vegas tourist attractions requires more than 240,000 hospitality workers. But those are not the only people getting up when the sun goes down to get the job done. We're taking a look at some of the less glamorous but just as important jobs that require the night shift. Who are these people keeping the city safe, clean, and running while the rest of us are sleeping? In this segment of While You Were Sleeping, we go behind the walls of the City of Las Vegas Department of Public Safety's inmate booking area and one of the male housing units in the detention center to meet some of the men and women who have committed their careers to keeping citizens and those incarcerated safe. It's 7.15 on a Tuesday night. This is typically one of the slower times in booking, yet police and city marshal cars are lined up outside and arrestees are being escorted inside. Those who were brought in here have been arrested for misdemeanor crimes. Misdemeanors include offenses such as a first or second DUI, shoplifting, battery, or solicitation of prostitution. These can carry up to a six-month sentence, but before any of that is decided, arrestees are booked and processed here, starting with being patted down by pre-booking officers. Many are cooperative, some not so much, sometimes a little more vocal and often under the influence of something. Regardless, all are treated with patience and dignity by the officers. 13-year veteran of the department, Sergeant Charles Smith. They'll come in, they'll be patted down twice by two of our PBOs. If it's a male, it'll be two male officers. If it's a female, two female officers. Once they're patted down, they'll be taken over here to the uh, PID machine where we'll try to verify their, if they've been arrested before. Uh, once that's completed, they'll have a, a medical pre-screen by EMT. Once they are assessed and cleared to stay at the detention center by the EMT, paperwork is submitted and the booking process continues with a more detailed medical screening. Corrections officers DeAndre Johnson is also trained as a classification officer. He explains the importance of the classification process. They may need help contacting a family member, their attorney, you know, dealing with the courts. Classification mainly deals with the court. You're anxious, huh? The new guy. Yeah. Officer Johnson says the other important role classification plays is making sure the inmate is properly placed in the detention center. For example, some who come in have been flagged as possible gang members. Classification is the line of defense that sees that. They conduct the interview, ask these individuals, you know, what type of gang they're affiliated with, if they have any past or present gang affiliation, and we assign them the appropriate house. And that way that when they are housed in a unit, we protect them from being assaulted or for any incident occurring. The staff is extremely careful when it comes to housing placement, and it doesn't just pertain to gang members. We can usually gauge somebody pretty well uh, when they come in, if they look like um, they might not be able to function in general population, we'll have a conversation with them and see if they're comfortable going in the general population or not. If they're not, then we'll isolate them so they feel comfortable. I know you're not even bringing that food down in my day room. As the night continues, we head to parts? Unit 3, Male General Population, where we find the inmates in free time. Now, this is the time of night where they can make phone calls, watch television, mingle, or play cards. The correction officers keep a close watch from behind the desk and walking among the inmates. The DPS staff never loses sight that these inmates are in here for a reason, but they treat them with dignity. When they come inside, you know, they're the average person. Some people could just be here for a bench warrant, you know, typical civilian that ended up having a bump in the road, coming in here for a warrant. You may have someone that has mental health issues, and we have to deal with them appropriately. So everyone's not the same that comes inside the facility. Should a problem arise, they deal with it on a case-to-case -case basis, which might include imposing tighter restrictions on that inmate. You got 15 minutes, five left on the shower. By 9 p.m., the common area starts to clear out as inmates head to their cells. By 9.15, it's TV off and lights out. Gentlemen, make sure your windows are closed.
fast forward to 3.15 a.m. It's dark outside, but inside the culinary area, it is bright and busy. These inmates have been carefully screened for work in the facility. These are coveted jobs that help pass time and give inmates experience they can use when they leave the detention center. The culinary workers actually get a uh, certificate at the end of the completion as far as food handling. So when they get out, they give them additional training the experience that they can use to try and get a job. The meals are prepped and placed in trays and on carts for delivery to the units. And promptly at 3.30, another set of workers leave their unit. Their job is to deliver the meals. By 4 a.m., breakfast has been served. Once the inmates get fed, the officers will go through, pick up the trays, and ensure that the unit's clean and ready to be handed over to day shift. Operations at DPS are like a well-oiled machine. The inmates are up before the sun, Another night shift is over. The men and women who watch over arrestees and inmates overnight will head home while many of us are just starting our day. It's not an easy schedule or way of life, but it is a life they intentionally chose. The reason I chose this line for my career is because I have a brother that's currently a law enforcement officer in Louisiana in Shreveport, and he just gave me the idea to try it out because I was going to school for social work. And he said, give it a try out, you know, you may be good for it with the background that you have. You know, tried it out and started to love this job. Ended up turning into a career for me. I think most of us that work in here want some kind of service to our communities, much like people that, that are in the military, they want to give back to the community, they want to um, make the uh, community safer. Um, and this is one pathway that allows them to accomplish that goal. Nancy Byrne here. I hope you enjoyed that story. For more great stories about the city of Las Vegas, don't forget to click on that box.